Greetings and welcome back to our Let's Play series. This is episode 56, and we're going to be continuing on part 2 of the Extreme Reactor setup. So let's just jump right into it. So when we left off yesterday, we were working on the gelled cryothium. And you'll be surprised to see that we've done quite a bit with it already. As you can see, we've gathered all the ingredients to make as many pieces of gelled cryothium, or the, and as many buckets of gel cryothium as I think we're going to need for this build. So let's go upstairs. And let's get this stuff prepared. So, let's see here. I guess we'll start with that since we can only do 16 snowballs at a time. I totally forgot about that. So let's put all those in there. And there. It should give us more than enough. As long as we don't forget that, I guess. There we go. That was about right anyway. So we have a full stack of this one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Extra. And then put back our our niter. Now by putting this in here, it should give us the 40 some buckets we need. So what I need to do is a place to store it. I decided I was just gonna put it in this tank. I need to turn it on. So it'll flow up in there. We're going to have our tank of gelled cryothium. Yep, it's going up in there. Slowly. This one takes a minute to cook. So while that's cooking, let's go look at the other few blocks that we're going to still need. We're going to need our two access ports. So let's grab some... that graphene wherever I put it over here I think yep let's grab a stack of that might need some glass you never know let's go up in here let's make our two reactor ports so we're gonna need a chest and two pistons so for that we're gonna need some redstone some iron we're going to need eight pieces of cobblestone. And let's go with birch planks because we always need birch planks. Let's make our pistons right off the bat. We have enough just for two. And then we need to make those chests. That's right. We need two of them. There we go. That should be enough to make our two access ports. Easy peasy. And then we'll want our control block here. It's going to require diamond and two uranium and some redstone. So, grab that. Grab that. And two uranium. And we have our control block. Whoops. Guess it wanted to give me more than just the control block. <laughs> Okay, so once we have those two, we're going to need the power tap. And that one's this one right here. So it's just going to require a little bit of redstone. Let's grab some redstone to make this happen. There we go. We now have our redstone to go with this. Now this is basically all that we, all that we require. Um, there are other, other points where we can control the reactor with redstone. Which is always a good idea because we want, we don't want our reactor running all the time because then it consumes just way too much power. So we're going to need some more redstone and a piece of gold. We'll try this one. And we're going to see about using it with a level emitter of some sort. We'll give it a try. Okay, so now we need to go put some of this stuff in place. So let's head downstairs. Make sure this is still going. 
There we go. Now let's break this up over here. At least right there for a second. Whoops, we fell down the hole and broke the wrong block. Oh well. So, let's hit our control block here. And we have our control block in place. So we're going to move our little fancy get up over here. And then we're going to walk around here. We'll be able to put our things in place in the back here. We'll take this one out as well. And we'll end up just moving them to the side here. There we go. Right in the middle. Let's put our power tap. Okay. And then off to the sides here. We're going to put our two. Uh, where did they go? Ah, dang it. They probably got put in that chest again. So we'll have to go get them. Oh, well. Let's go. I hate that it switches out when I shift build stuff. So let's find them. There they are. Reactor ports. Good enough. Okay. So now that we have those, let's put them in place. And I hear an Enderman. We may have to go help him out. There he is. That makes this easy. There we go. He didn't last long. It reminds me while the jungle Carothia is cooking. We should go check our our plants outside. Oh, and it's raining. No wonder he's in the basement. There we go. More ender pearls. Not that we super need them much anymore, but they are there. Okay, so we have that. Now for our power, we're not going to put our redstone controller on there yet until we know exactly what we're doing here. So for our power tap, we're just going to put it right off of the back here because it's pretty much going to come right off of that so what we're going to do here is we're initially going to limit it by giving it only one cable in so that basically allows for the RF to be output here and the RF to be input here Okay, good enough, good enough. So, we're going to do a basic setup here while we wait for the gelled cryothium. Pretty much just going to copy what was already there. We don't have many glass blocks, but we might as well take advantage of them and make it look somewhat nice. Though we could always just make more if we needed to. Let's go drop the rest of this gelled cryothium, or this cryothium dust, into the system here. There we go. We're getting quite a few. We have 35 buckets now. We're almost to our 40, 44 I think we required. Yep, 44 we required. So we have 18 glass left and plenty of reactor blocks left. Very nice. So what I'd like to eventually be able to do is have some sort of RF monitoring that tells when our cell is getting full. And if our cell is full Oh, we're low on power. If our cell is full then we want to turn off the reactor. Air not valid for reactor. Yep, because we still have air blocks in there. Oh, and this one's starting to drain too. 
Well, it's good we're doing what we're doing. We're gonna get full up here soon. Then I can run both of them at the same time. Oh, our gel crayon theme is probably done by now. Oh, it's only got 12 pieces left. So this other uh, power cell is going to be used for a mob spawner setup. So it'll be set off of there so we don't have much issue with power coming directly from the source. So it'll be able to spawn as much as it needs to. And or to keep the shield active because that's going to be the most important. Because if the shield fails while well, we have something to spawn in there, it's pretty much loose. And that'll destroy our base. Especially if we're spawning a wither. So we're going to try not to do that. Okay, so we got our 44 buckets here. There we go. Now let's head down here. We're going to put our gelled cryothium in place. So we're just going to set it down right there. We're going to grab a bucket. We're just going to start putting it in here. Now it has similar principles to water. As I'm sure you're well aware. It does cause, it does have a freezing effect though, which is definitely neat. And I think it does stack if you mess up. So we're just going to put it in all these places. And what I'll do is, I'll be back once I've filled this whole thing up. There we are. We got the last buckets in place. And now it's solid gel cryothium. Now it will flow down just like um, gravity affects it. Kind of like sand and um, gravel. It has odd effects like that, but it, it all really works out in the end. So we're going to put some of the clear glass around it here. Hopefully we should have enough of the reactor glass to do that, and we do. And then we'll fill the rest in with the uh, the reactor casing. And as you can see, now we have a permanent supply of snowballs. Because it will build up on there. Now we'll just finish this up. And then it should become a complete structure. You'll see it change a little bit in the way it looks. And there we go. See how it changed? It's got the edges and the sides. Now it should be a full structure here. And you can see that it has quite a bit in there. So what we want to do is, we first want to set up one of its ports to be an input. Let's move these out of the way for the moment here. So as you can see, this is going to be pretty empty, and we're going to see how fast it fills up. So this is one of the input ports, and then we got one of the exit ports. So we're going to go grab a few things to make this a little bit better. And you're going to see how this comes to life in a way. Let's grab our uranium. Yeah, that should be enough to get us started. Five or six. Then let's grab. I guess we're going to have to make one. So let's make a hopper. There we go. That should be enough. We'll grab some wood. Make a chest. Take that chest. Make a hopper. There we go. That'll be enough to get us started. We'll eventually have a permanent setup where it's pumping into there. But for now, this is what we're going to have. Because we want to make sure it's going to work. We're just testing it out. I like the lights causing it to turn it off. Okay, so we're going to pump those pieces of uranium right in there. Like so. There we go. So as it continues to fill up here. Yep, there we go. So... We got that. We're going to change this one to an eject only port. So output mode. And we'll have it eject waste and or eject fuel, but we won't eject fuel right now. 
Let's go to the front and let's turn this bad boy on and see how she does. So to turn it on, you're gonna hit, um, you're gonna hit activate reactor. And you're gonna watch it turn on, and you're gonna see how much power it produces. We're already over 7,000 RF. This is gonna be quite a bit of power. It looks like it's doing really good. We're consuming quite a bit of fuel for the seven millibuckets, and that's fine. We can always adjust the depth of the uh, the rods. So once the reactor is running, you have the ability to adjust the in and outs of the rods themselves, so that you can maximize the efficiency of your reactor. So right now, we're sitting about 7.8 which is pretty good. It's not storing any power right now. So let's see. It's filling right up. Yep, it's working quite well. And it'll eat these as it needs them. And then it'll eject them when it needs to. So what I typically do is I'll turn this down so that it's almost right around maximum for what we're using. We got our gelled cryothium in place, as you can see. We got our reactor on. We got our fuel reactivity. So this is pretty good, I think. So what I want to do is, I'm going to want to lower it down to right around 4-ish, I think. So that's almost in half. So we're going to change all these. be at about 50 percent. This should significantly decrease several factors. The fuel usage, the amount of power output, yep, so four, so per worked out perfectly. It's exactly where we wanted it. Okay, so now let's go check our buffer again, or our power cell, I should say. There we go. It's filling up quite nicely. Now, in an attempt to use as much as possible of this, we're going to swap out using the speed modifiers. Let's see, we need our we're gonna need our assembler wand. There it is. Let's go down here. We're gonna swap these out, because right now it's using about 18. We want to put it at maximum. Or maximum of what it's capable. Without having to upgrade it yet. Which is fine. So now, you're going to be able to see it moving quite a bit faster. Throw those in there. So now you can see there's a block coming up every few seconds now, instead of every so often. And so we'll also turn on the resource miner. Now we'll go over here and check out our reactor. Still not... Um, Still not hitting the buffer, but we are still building up power. Quite a bit of power. We may have to get and put in upgrades in our resource miner, but it's not really necessary because we've got plenty of mica already. And outside of that, I don't really know what we need the resource miner for anymore since we've maximized our productivity of the other things. Hmm. So it's about to fill up, and once it gets full, then you'll see the internal buffer, which I think is 10 million on this, you'll start to see it fill up. Yep, see there we go. And if you look around the menu there, let's remove the menu here, if it'll let me. Oh, the old O button doesn't work to remove the menu, but you can kind of see it through there, it says 10 million, and that's how much it'll store. That'll be good. I'll, I'll let it run at this pace. We'll see how much uranium it consumes. Shouldn't be that much. And all of our machines will have power through that whole setup. The tree farm will still produce power for these machines here. And it still has its 50 million RF energy cell. Let's hope it starts building up again because we burn through quite a bit by having all these running all the time. But all is well that ends well.
And so I think we're going to call this episode to a close now that we have the reactor we need. I thank you guys again for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. And I'll see you guys next time.